Hey everybody, it's Jimbo, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Now, last time we talked about the fact that every program that runs on a Unix operating system has its own ID number. And Corn Shell, when you run a Corn Shell on your terminal window, that's going to get its own ID number. And if you have 10 different people having 20 different terminal screens open, all running corn shell. Each one of those corn shell shells running on those terminal windows are all going to have different process ID numbers. And for this one, it's going to be this five digit number here. And remember, Corn shell holds the value of its process ID in a variable called dollar and to get the value out of a variable you put a dollar sign in front of a variable name therefore dollar dollar is what we use. Now we also mentioned that if you run a corn shell script that whole script has its own process ID. So let's take a look at a script that uses the corn shell process ID variable dollar. So our program is called resvar2.ksh and it goes over the holding of the ID number in the special corn shell variable called dollar. And all this script does is it prints out the value within the dollar sign variable, in other words, it prints out the ID number that the Unix operating system assigns whenever you run this program, and it prints it out a second time, and then it prints a blank line. Now the reason I did this, printing it out twice, is I wanted to show that the dollar dollar is associated with running of the whole script. It is not associated with each individual command within the script. So let's run this. And as you can see, it printed out the same value twice. So while this script was running, it's not running anymore, but while it was running, its Unix process ID was 13987. Let's run the script again. And as you can now see, when we run it this time, a new process ID is given. The next process ID number available. Now, how does this all help us? Well, let's take a look at a script that, let's say you wrote and it is the greatest script in the world. It's the best thing since sliced bread and the internet combined. Now let's say you wrote this really great script and it's very useful for your company. It does some important number crunching, gathers some important information, and then saves it out to a file. Here's our script, rv3.ksh for reserved variable 3.ksh and the script goes over saving output to unique files. Now let's just pretend this is some great computational thing that we just did right here. The only thing this is is the Unix date command which prints out the date. But let's pretend it's some useful information that we really need saved. And we're saving it out to rv3 dot out. Now here's the problem. You run this script, it runs this command, it gets to this point here, and it says, oh, we got a redirection arrow, so that means take the output from this command and save it to this file right here. Great, you got this value saved. However, because this script is so awesome, everybody runs it. And whenever they run it, they get to this point, and it overwrites the output of our v3 dot out. So, all that great work 
that the script does goes nowhere. It gets overwritten constantly because your script is so popular and it's run every five seconds by everybody in the company. So how do we make it so that every time you run the script, it saves output to a unique file? Well, we already know that the Unix operating system assigns a unique ID number to every single time you run that script. And it saves that value in a variable called dollar. So the only thing we have to do is put at the end of this file name dot dollar dollar and here's what that does. It runs this command, sees the redirection arrow and says, oh, I need to redirect some output. And it saves it to this file. Corn shell sees a dollar sign and says, oh, I got to do some variable substitution. Sees the second dollar sign and says, that's my variable name for my unique ID number assigned to me by the operating system. So what happens is it ends up saving whatever this output is to a variable, excuse me, a file called rv3.out. And then that unique five digit number. In my case, it's five digits on my operating system. On other people's operating systems, it might be six, seven, or eight digits, depending on what type of Unix you run. Now, there's one more thing we want to do. We have just saved all of our output from our script to a unique file. But let's let the user know what the name of that unique file is. Just like that. Let's run this script and see what happens. Okay, so we can see that our output was saved to this unique file. And we run the script again, and lo and behold, there is another unique file generated. And if we run our script again, as you can see, it created another unique file. 